Hello everybody, this is Nino and in this video I am going to show you an implementation of an artificial intelligence, once again a sort of chatbot, based on the principle of logical triangulation. This time it is written in Fortran 90. Once again it is going to be a swarm intelligence which is the favorite kind of intelligence for me. So far, no swarm exists, just some setup files. Running the script solo queen will generate the swarm. Interaction with the user will be governed by the script overlord.sh. I am assuming that you have Linux and are trying all your experiments on that. Personally, I am using Scientific Linux 6. I leave it to you to adjust parts and pro programs according to your system, if it differs. And now, let's have some fun. I compiled the program. This main executable is called Pter. You know, for flying, basically. And then, let's generate the swarm. That's it. We now have a swarm of two dozens of insects. From Pupa 1 to Pupa 24. These are the cocoons of them. Now we shall run overlord.sh. And again, when I input something, for instance, hail the, hail the, hail the the system will try to attribute the responsibility for answering my challenge to some sort of insect. The problem is, in the beginning it knows nothing at all, so it will need to force some insect to reply to, to me. Then basically some best fit will be selected and the best fit will be forced to reply and the reply is hail the because obviously each hail the is followed by at least one further hail the. I shall now have some further conversation with the system. During this time I will put, your, put you on a break and I will then show you the results. We shall thereafter examine the changes in the knowledge base. In the beginning don't expect any fancy conversation and most likely all insect matches will be forced as the system knows nothing and the insects are few. This obviously can be adjusted and if you're patient things can become more fascinating. As usually however the response times can be very long. One of my experiments which has been running now for over two years no, nearly two years actually is taking response times in the order of a week perhaps a few days less but be patient with this sort of thing now I shall show you the funny results of our little conversation I said after it told to me hail thee we shall chat we shall have fun it answered, the we. <laughs> I can tell you that it has this fragment from the having been followed by we over here. Then I say, you seem to have a clear concept, huh? Well, still, I must be patient. It tells we you, which it has from here. Then I say, I see you look into the void. The unbeing still governs your mind and it says you I see thereupon I am saying are you sure within your mind I am only a voice I am only basically its replies are fragments of the text which I have told to it earlier as it has no other source of knowledge and it tries to answer me as best as it can based on the very few interactions we have had so far. As you surely notice, the system does not have reflexes changing I and you, 
as my usual designs. It is nonetheless a very interesting experiment, a very interesting mirror of the human user of such a system. I shall now terminate the conversation by issuing to it empty input and thereupon we are going to have a look at its knowledge base. Notice that the system most enriched with knowledge is the twentieth insect. The one having received first any knowledge is the twenty-fourth insect. So maximum development we will find in insect twenty. We shall now look at its knowledge base. Mind you, this is a system written in Fortran, so it's not based on symbolic reasoning as the Lisp system, which is why, unfortunately, its knowledge base is consisting out of integers and not symbols. So you can't just so very easily see what an atom truly signifies. It's not written as text as in the Lisp and Scheme systems. Let's now go down to Pupa 24. You will now notice a large file which constitutes its knowledge base and namely sysarray.txt. What does sysarray.txt look like? Well, let's say, show me the first 25 lines. And there we go. You are seeing here, basically, the atoms out of which the system consists. You are having here basically such elementary atoms, like this one, which consist of no other atoms, and more complex atoms like these. All right, now if we go up to another insect, let's look at this file again, yeah, there we go. Here, this was where it recorded a lot of knowledge. You will now notice that you don't see immediately a lot of elementary atoms. They still exist, but they might be further down. Let's say, if you look at the 250 lines, there again you see the elementary atoms. But as you go up, you start to see relations built out of other atoms. And the sign is signifying whether you are dealing with a Wick connection, which is positive, or an Anna connection, which is negative. So when you're having two positive atoms, they constitute a weak connection, whereas two negative ones, an Anna connection. These connections can thereafter be used by the Fortran system for logical triangulations. And that's about it, really. I wish you a lot of fun with experiments with this system or any other of your choice. I would be very happy if you tune in to my future videos as well and let me know what you think. I am sorry if this is not very obvious in its operation, but still I hope that it is going to be a fancy and funny experiment to you. And I kindly thank you for watching. Goodbye.